Hi everyone, this is May Sukyong Park. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a set of one layer cards using a few card making techniques. Ink blending, tone on tone stamping, heat embossing, and dart technique. I'll be also making matching envelopes using the ombre stamping technique, which is very easy to do. As usual, I'll share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my craft desk after my project is done. So make sure to watch the video until the end. A few weeks ago, my friend Svitlana from the Ultra New Car Design team sent me this journal notebook as a gift and I was totally inspired by this beautiful cover. I love the gold sentiment and the background image against the dark background and I decided to create a background something like this cover image. I chose the leaf canopy stamp set from all to new, which is very popular among crafters. I'll be using only solid images from the set for the background stamping. Then I'll be using one of the sentiments from the Happy Dreams stamp set. When it comes to tone and tone stamping, I recommend not to choose too bright or too dark colored cardstock. That way, you'll be able to achieve a crisp and dramatic effect. I'll start by cutting my panel into 4 quarter inch by 5.5 inches using Timur tonic paper trimmer out of Alto New Lagoon paper. You can stamp your images directly onto the A2 size top folding card base if you want to. However, I love to stamp on the panel to get a nice stamping impression when I stamped my images multiple times. I'm going to do some ink blending on my panel with 3 shades of inks from Alto New Sweet Dreams Over Ink Set. Aqualicious, Hill Cave, and Galastic Stream. Make sure to choose the similar color family with the colors cardstock you choose. I'm inking the medium color Hill Cave along the edge of my panel using a mini blending tool. I'm moving my ink blending tool in a circular motion for smooth blending. For my light color, I'm applying Aqualicious toward the center of my panel. Then I'm going to apply Galastic Stream ink heavily toward the edge of my panel to create an intense color. And here is my silly mistake happens. I ruined my inked background by mistake. I should have held my panel firmly or taped the panel down temporarily. I had to throw away my ruined panel and start it over. Later, I learned that I could have saved my panel by running it through my die cutting machine with a paper shim to flatten it back. To create a gradient background, I will overlap the colors between each shade. It takes time to get a better result with the blending, so I'm going to keep applying ink until I'm happy with my background. I placed a piece of print paper underneath my panel to protect my work area. I'm also using a post note to place it underneath my right hand because I don't want to pick up some ink from the inked background and transfer it to the other part of my background. Your ink blending might look splotchy in the beginning, but believe me, once you keep blending with inks, the background will smoothen out once it's dry. I'm going to create one more ink blended background using the ink colors from all to new warm and cozy over ink set, orange cream, autumn blaze, and fire brick. If you don't have a colored cardstock you want, you could use a white cardstock and ink the colors you want to achieve, but you might take more time to complete your background. If you are a beginner at ink blending technique, I recommend you use the light shade of colored cardstock to create an ombre background. After ink blending is done, I'm going to dry my panels using a heat tool to set the ink I applied. Here is the comparison between the original colored cardstock and inked panels. Don't you just love that you can create your own colored background using the ink blending technique? Depending on how much ink you apply, you will be able to create a bunch of different backgrounds using only a few ink colors. I'm pulling out two solid images from the leaf canopy stamp set. The shadow images in this set are perfect for background stamping. If you don't have this stamp set, just take some time to go through your stash and find any solid images that can be stamped as a background. I'm going to use the original misty stamping tool to make sure I get good stamping impression. 
After positioning my stamps above my sentiment area, I'm going to ink up the stamps with alternate fire brick ink, which is the darkest color that I applied on the inked background. Then I'm closing the misty door stamped images onto my paper. I'm making sure that I transfer my images well on the paper by pressing the misty door hard with even pressure. I'm not going to show you the whole stamping process as it's pretty much the same. Please note that I'm stamping two or three times for each image to get good impression with intense color. I'm going to keep stamping until I complete my background, leaving some area in the center for the sentiment. This misty stamping tool is very useful when it comes to creating a stamped background with several stamps. It helps me stamp the images in a perfect placement and get a nice impression. By the way, you can use alternate embossing ink for tone on tone stamping if you want to. I'm using colored ink just because I want to get more intense impression rather than subtle impression. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to dry the panel with my heat tool to prevent from ink smudge. Actually, I was going to heat emboss some small images with gold embossing powder of the stamped images. So I'm testing out if my panel is completely dry by pouring some embossing powder of the panel. But embossing powder is sticking to all of the stamped images. Since I was in a hurry finishing my cards, I changed my mind and decided to skip embossing the images. I'm going to place my panel back to my original misty stamping tool and treat my paper with embossing magic powder bag. Then I'm going to ink up my sentiment stamp with alternate embossing ink and close the misty door to stamp the sentiment onto my paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate anti gold embossing powder of the sentiment and tap the excess powder off my paper. I'm using my dry paint brush to flick away any stray powder. Next, I'm mounting my panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using the double sided tape. You can stop here if you want to, but I'm going to add some dust between the images using the white gel pen. Here are a few examples of my cards that I use the dot technique. If you haven't done it yet, I strongly recommend you give this technique a try, especially if you are looking for an easy way to dress up your stamped background, this dot technique will give your card a more finished look while small dots add subtle details to your card design. Depending on your projects, you can add dust in different colors instead of white. You can also adjust the size of the dot by choosing a different tip from your marker or pen. Simply, the possibilities are endless. I'm going to add a message inside my card and back of the card using the sentiments from the Happy Dreams and Crafty Friends stamp set. I'm also going to create matching envelopes by simply stamping the same solid images on a flap of my envelopes. This is one of my ways to dress up envelopes. So simple and gorgeous. For my second card, I applied alternate embossing ink directly along the top and bottom of my card front and sprinkled some alternate anti-gold embossing powder. Then I heat set the embossing powder using my heat tool to add a messy and beautiful accent on my card front. It was my first time trying messy heat embossing and I had so much fun. This is it for today. Make sure to leave a comment below and tell me which card you like the better. Blue card with white dust or red card with gold heat embossed accent. I'd love to hear from you. I hope this video tutorial inspires you to create your own background using the ink blending technique. If you enjoyed my video, Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye!